Recording. Welcome to Sis Podcast. Okay, I'm your host today, Diego Almeida. Today I'm with a Trunk Win, the dude, the, the the savage, the hard motherfucker. You know, he <laughs> what's did. Up, what's up? I I just should, uh, normally I send a title to everyone. I said, man, what's you? What do you like to you know be introduced like? He said, no, I just want to be introduced like a dude. <laughs> How you been, man? I'm good, bro. How are you? How are I'm you? doing good. Uh, I've been following you. I've been seeing you. Good stuff. You've been doing it. Uh, you know, I love it. And for those one who don't know a little bit of your past, you know, you was an uh, active military, and also you was a Chicago uh, SWAT yep. team, right? Yeah. For you just retire, and now finally Texas, man. Welcome to Texas. Let's go, freedom, freedom country, player. <laughs> That's awesome, man. How how you been like so far, Texas? Everything is big. Everything is good. I'm not freezing my ass off. I'm wearing shorts right now. You That's know, good. like right now in Chicago, it's like single digits. It's snowing. I lived there almost all my life, and I just got tired of it. You know, tired of the bullshit, tired of the politics, tired of the crime. I was like, you know what? I got to go down to Texas. Texas is where it's at. You know, that's where I always wanted to like live here. And I was like, hey, I can just talk or do something about it. So I decided to do something about it. So here I am. Uh, anything inspire you to be here? Like any friends or anything like that? Or just yep. you, just you're like, fuck it, I'm going to do yep. it. I'm just going to do it, bro. All right, right on, man. I, the yeah. first question I was going to ask you, you know, uh, you know, I know you, you've been, you know, active in military. I would just want to know, like, how'd you, The, was the interest in like how did like okay man i want to join the military just for those reasons or just like oh i want to just go to be a better person and things like that you know as you saw as opportunity because uh you your family immigrant too or you or no yep yeah you know the immigrant and like same do i you know i'm a brazilian immigrant here and the u.s been so awesome to me to i uh, grow so much opportunities you know like build my business and be able to do whatever i want so how was that for you Well, first off, kudos to you, bro. You know, you came here. You understand like I do. We're, we're immigrants here, right? We're not born here. People who were born here, they, they, they got it good. And sometimes they forget, man. They forget how other countries live. Third world countries like Vietnam, Brazil, we str people struggling to, to make ends meet. And you get the opportunity to come here in America. And it's up to you. What do you want to do with that opportunity? You can sit here and bitch, moan, complain. And just do what everybody else does and try to get freebies or do what you do, build a business, get after it, you know? And that's, I think that's freaking phenomenal, bro. I'm so proud of you. I love what you do, yeah. professor. Because yes, I do, sir. I stopped doing jits for a little bit. I know, I should get back. I stopped. Come on, let's go. I know, I know, I, I know, seriously, for sure. But uh, to answer your question, um, I came in when I was three, man. Grew up in the hood, you know, really freaking poor uh just around violent crimes lots of gangs lots of drugs and uh my mother it was just my mother my two sisters and myself and my little brother came later uh from another father uh, from someone else so my father was never in my life so i grew up without like a father figure you know but i always had a sense of purpose of wanting to serve or do something greater you know i i something always inside of me that wanted to go beyond your typical office job or, or be a, uh, like my, my Asian parents, my, my Asian mom wants me to be a lawyer, a doctor, a pharmacist, typical, you know, Asian, like, why don't you do that? I wanted to be out there and, and really work with my hands, really use my brain. You really use my body. So one day my mom sent, My uh, my mom's friend sent my mom a VHS. And for you guys who don't know, VHS back in the days are these little cassette players you put into a, a little cassette player to press play. And it's like now the, the DVDs and the Blu-rays, mm -hmm. right? And it was Army Ranger School because her son just graduated as a lieutenant in the Army. And I watched uh, Ranger School. I was like, oh, shit, this is freaking badass. This is definitely something... I'm interested in, man, because they're talking about commandos. Like they start off with like 350 people and they graduated like 40 people. So I was like, this is what I wanted. I want to be challenged. I want to do something like this, you know, and it's just, so then I started getting a really interested in it. I, I go to Barnes and Nobles that back then again, look at how I'm dating my age, right? Now everybody has a smartphone, right? They can just go on Google and type or YouTube and find out anything they want. But back then internet was like, 
horrible. It was like dial-up. You plug in the phone. Yeah. So I had to go to Barnes and Nobles and do my research on uh, being an Army Ranger, find out the lineage, read about the history, read about the requirement, read about like everything they did. And it was definitely something I wanted to do. So I kept that in the back of my head when I was going through school. You uh, every then you already seen like that would challenge you or you thought it would be like like you would be good doing it or you like something challenged you when you're taught back in the day. Yeah, definitely challenging. It, it was definitely something that is outside your comfort zone. You know, when you, you when you're when you're doing something like that, especially go trying to be an army ranger, it's not an easy task. You know, it's it's very difficult, and it's really up, up upon you if you are willing to prepare yourself mentally, physically for the challenge, or you're just gonna come there half ass it and quit. You know, because you can quit anytime. Yeah, anytime. That's, that's Quick is easy. Yeah, it's so, that. Huh. Yeah, quitting is easy. Anybody yeah. can fucking quit. It's like it's like breathing, you know. So uh, that's one of those school, one of those courses, or one of that career field where it's volunteer. So they they give you yeah, you join the army. If you quit, you're gonna go to the big army, man. You, you know you're stuck in the big army, the the conventional army. But if you want to stay, if you want to pursue the chance of, to serve in a special operation unit and do special operations missions, then you you got to show that, that that you belong. So uh, I kept the back of my head. I went to school. Then 9-11 kicked off, you know, September 11th, 2001, that whole ordeal with the, the, you know, the planes flying into New York. And that really struck something in me. You know, I was like, man, I've been in America for at that time, 19 plus years. Uh, you know, uh, this country has given me so much. You know, I want to serve my country. I want to go and fight this war. So that's when I made the decision to sign, sign up to be a ranger. And here's the funny thing. My mom, like I said, she thought she wants me to be a doctor. She wants me to be a lawyer. So I snuck away to the recruiter and I signed a contract without her knowing. So a month before I deployed to uh, Fort Benning, which is in Georgia for the go to boot camp, I brought it uh, you know, to Chinatown. And I, I sat her down with my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, hey, mom, just want to let you know. Uh, I got to tell you something. It's just like, what, your girlfriend's pregnant? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I signed up to the Army. And she flipped out, man. She's like crying. She's like, no, you're going to die. You know, oh, my God, why did you do that? Blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I talked to her. I was like, calm down. It's going to be okay. This is my passion. This is, some, this is my purpose in life right now where God has led me down. I need to walk this path, you know. This is something for me. So – I did. I went, man, and that's how it all started, bro. That's awesome. And uh, and like through that through that process, uh, how important was like to keep mentally top? Because everybody know, sure. you know, like uh, 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 the hell week. Everybody know, like mm -hmm. I know we we only can imagine that like uh, the per the people who never been, you know, the yeah. listening who never been like on on a field like that. How was uh your thoughts? Because I know like nowadays it's more open you know people talk yeah. about that you kind of learn like on podcasts and youtube videos and things like that you know but you yeah. have to feel that like mm -hmm. how you are mentally prep prepped to go to something like that especially you have somebody like yelling to you and mm -hmm. you know and trying to see breaking you in, in a point of a like breaking you to build you don't break you to make, make you miserable but to yeah. breaking you to make you like a bigger person a better person you know mm -hmm. how was that for you you know i think what the army did and there's two folds to that you know the first fold is boot camp that's what and, and that's what they did you know they like you described they break you down to build you up then you get a chance to try out to be a ranger that's totally they're, They're, they're not there to build you up. They're there to fucking break you. And they want to see how far mentally and physically strong you are as an individual. Can you be an asset to this organization? Can you keep up? That's what they're looking for. They're not, they're, they're, it's no longer big army. There's no longer, oh, yeah, we're here. You're great. You did a great job. You know, you passed High this. Five. High five. No, this is like straight up a kick in the balls. You know, it's like, hey, we're bringing it. Either you keep up or you fucking quit. Literally, that, that, that is literally it. And when you're placed in that position, when you're placed in that time, it's just you. I mean, yeah, as much as, much as you have your friends to your left and right, they're suffering too. And there's people quitting left and right. You know, it's cold outside. 
We have a ruck on top of our head. We're holding this 65 pound ruck like this at three o'clock in the morning. We're sweating and it's like freezing. It's like 30 degrees outside. And you know, they have a bonfire right there. They're like, Hey, you can quit anytime. Go sit there and grab a, a sleeping bag and roasting uh, some hot dogs and keep warm. You just, all you have to do is quit. And then, then, then this mental game, you got to, then you play with yourself and you got to realize like, and my, when I first signed this contract, when I first made the, the conscious, this conscious decision to do this, how, how much resolve, how, how willing am I to see it, see it through? And a lot of people forget that when they, when, when they're introduced to suffering, yeah. right? When they're introduced to outside their comfort zone, that really tests your purpose, your resolve, your, your resilience, your perseverance that really tests you. Like, is this something I really want to do? And, and that that's really when it exposes who you are as a person. Cause then if you really see, are you all talk or, 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 or freaking all action, you know, and you just got to suck it and just got to remember, Hey man, this is what I wanted it to, to do. This is just temporary. This suffering I'm going through, it's not going to last forever. You know, next week, uh, next Sunday, when we leave this place, it's coming. You know, regardless if I make it or if I quit, Sunday is going to come. It's up to me to stick it out. You got to take it bit by bit. And that's what I took it, man. I was like, I'm here. I want to be here. I signed this contract. I went through all these issues to get to where I'm here right now to, to earn a slot to try out for this fucking uh, this unit. I'm going to give it everything I got or I, I'm going to fucking die. That's that, that was, the, that was my mentality going through it. Don't so it. yeah. And it's, it has to do a lot to do with our hardship growing up too, bro. You know, you came from Brazil. I can, I can only imagine what you went through. You yeah. know, I went through a hardship a lot when I was a kid that built my mental toughness. That, like but, I knew like, this is, this you, is you, you, you think it like the way uh, you do in sea life now like comes a lot from when you're a child like you, you think like the way the child are getting um raised now by parents like you know you cannot discipline them you cannot you have to be buddy buddies with your your student your, yeah. your, your kid how did you you think that's in like a, a huge influence in your life or you think that's no matter no it, it's a huge influence it all starts with the uh, you need a foundation right yeah a, 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 a beautiful house, doesn't matter how beautiful it is, if the structure is shitty, it's going to collapse, right? Yes. So, so what do you need in life? You have to build that structure if you have kids, for your kids. You have to discipline them. Maybe not like beat them all the time, but, you know, like make them do push-ups. Just get them disciplined, build that core structure because that's, that's going to matter in life later. Because if you coddle them and say, oh, yeah, it's okay, Everybody wins a trophy. There's no need to keep score. And so they think like life is like that. They think, oh, life is easy. Everybody's a winner. Everybody gets everything. No, life is not like that. Life slaps you in the motherfucking face. Life is hard. Hey, hard. And, and that's what you need to you're, – you're doing your child a disservice. And I'm, I thank God that my mom didn't raise me like that. She beat my ass the same, when I was a man. kid. You know, when I was young, man, my mom had a bamboo stick, bro. Every time she pulls that out. <laughs> I was like, God damn. I'm like, I got like, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to get my ass beat, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but dude, it, it, you know, it really molded me. The discipline, being a single mom and, and the way she was, two jobs, trying to support her parents back home, try to support her kids here, and, 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 be, and still took the time out to show me that type of love. Because parents... I think parents get a misconception like, oh, if you coddle your kids, you really love them. No, you, no, you don't. You really want to love your kids? You got to freaking, you got to discipline them. You got to show them what's right and wrong. You got to understand that life, you got to teach them that life is not fair, that it's okay to lose, but not quit, you know? And, 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 and that's the one thing I, I'm so gra grateful that my mom taught me. And, and, and I took that and that, that was just the building block, you know, that and everything I went through life. And, and that just, yep, yeah, now it just plays a full circle man and it just got me where i was and, and pushed me through to the to where i where i end up 
me. So wow, that's awesome because that's a, a that's actually a thing I I discuss, you know, like between friends and when we talk about like students and like families, you know, because we have like a weekly uh, the business uh, company meeting, yeah. and uh, we normally like you know like oh the student cancel and sometimes it's like because they move it because we're in San is a military town, so they have a like, base up here, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's just because of a, like. Oh, uh, my kid is they don't like this because it's hard. Like, really? Yeah. Like, you know, I understand, yeah. like, it's not easy. Jiu Jitsu is freaking hard. You know, mm -hmm. if you're coming to here expecting you're gonna face a, a you know, like, a, no offense, but a basketball game and just hit the ball, yeah. and just should do a target. No, because you have to use your brain, your body, everything at the same time. And then you see, it said, see those parents. Uh, teach the kids like uh, quitting, like do do quit this. This is hard to yeah. quit it. And, like yeah. this is for me, it's very very sad, you know. But I have a nine month old, you know, and that's how I told my wife. Thank you. I told my wife all the time. I said hey, she, my wife is a, a veteran, you know, she's serving the Air Force. I tell her all the time, say like, I don't care. Like she, I'm gonna make sure she's like. You know, on point on that. If she don't like mm -hmm. jujitsu, I she have no option. She have to train mm -hmm. and she she lives on my house. You know, and mm -hmm. try like I said, build the discipline because yep. we are in a consistently uh, building each other, like build ourselves. You know, each other and ourselves, like to get better, like to don't yep. get stuck. You know, and I, that's where I think I, I, it's important. And I, I like I love that you mentioned that as well. And uh, I, another question here. So after you. You get out of the military, you you like you got out of it, then you become a cop, you know. And uh, what I heard in our research, you was a really bad motherfucking cop. You <laughs> you were really good. Uh, maybe the department don't appreciate that. And I know you know, and I know like your posts and things like that. You talk about some stuff like that, but I know you know the community pretty sure appreciate that for sure, you know. And uh. Tell us like a little bit about like when you joined and how was the transition to the SWAT team? Yeah, uh, so being a cop was something I always wanted to do as a kid too, man. I remember, uh, it was a, really actually remember second grade, we had a coloring book. I mean, just a book and it was just, you know, like a typical second grader book. And I, I looked in there, they had firefighters, police and everything. And so I was always drawn to the cop, the cop life, you know? And like I said, we grew, I grew up in the hood, dude. And uh, I saw the cops in action. I mean, like, come on. Like, when you grow up around gangs, you're sitting here on the corner playing basketball or playing marbles, you know, because back then when we were kids, I, we played outside all the time. We don't, yeah. I was rarely inside playing video games. Literally, come home from school, do my homework, bye, mom, leave. I just go out there with my, my friends and just play all day outside. And we used to see cops, like, do their job, running, chasing criminals, do, you know, doing that. I was like, dude, I, to me, I was like, man, that is so cool. That is something I want to do. So when I was in the military on my last year, I had to make a tough decision of either re-enlisting, staying, or leaving. And I decided to leave. So I wanted to pursue – I was, you know, I was in my prime. I wanted to pursue law enforcement because that was another passion of mine, another goal of mine. And I was wanted to join the SWAT team. So I left. I came back. I went to college a little bit. It wasn't for me. I started applying for uh, police departments. Uh, these three that was hiring at the time, one picked me up immediately. Uh, it was like a suburban department out in uh, Illinois. Worked there for uh, like about two years. Got bored because it's like a rich town. I was like, I need to do something that's challenging. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rookie cop. I can't be stuck in a rich town where there's no crime. I want to learn. I want to do police work, right? So I left. I packed my bags. Uh, obviously, I applied first. They accepted me uh, to L.A. So I, I went to LAPD, uh, went to their police academy, graduated top of the class like I did my last academy, uh, did two years out there. Man, I got to beat the police, dude. It, it was awesome. Like LAPD in 2011. We used to run and gun. I got to experience what it was like to be a real cop in a big city. Dude, it was amazing experience, you know. And I was planning on staying out there to join LAPD SWAT. But my mom got old and she needed my help. So me being the oldest son, I had to pack my bags and come back to Chicago. So when I took the LA test, I took the Chicago test too. But Chicago, put when you test for Chicago at the time, they put you in a lottery system. So it's usually like a two-year period. So it kind of worked out. Uh -huh. So when I left, I came back from L.A. 
Chicago called me I'm like, Hey, are you still interested? I'm like, hell yeah. So I went through another Academy. So I went to three Academy now this time, my guy, let me tell you, you know, you, you would think after your third <laughs> Academy, you know, I'm already a veteran officer four years on, I would be like, Hey, yeah, fuck it. You know, I'm, I'm a veteran. Let me just chill, do chill. But you know what? I, I didn't want it. I didn't want that mindset. That's not the way I think. I want to be, I want to humble myself to be able to be like, hey, I'm going to put out like these new recruits, like these new guys, like if it was day one for me, because I have to set the, the standard. I have to set the example because the homeroom instructors were looking at me because I was the leader of the class. You know, I was the commander of the class. They were looking at me to set the, the standard. And if I came in there and I set the standard low because I am jaded, because I was like, oh, I've done this job already. You guys do your shit. Then shame on me. Right. And that's yeah. not the way I think. And that's not the way I operate. So I gave out like I wasn't like I was just day one. Like I didn't know anything. Like fresh. So I graduated. Yeah, fresh. Fresh. Put at it. Get after it. And, you know, I graduated top of my class again. I got a, a couple of awards from there. Uh, then I started working in Chicago, man. Working in Chicago Beach, South Side, West Side. You know, we did all that. Dude, that is crazy, man. So, Chicago, man, again, you got to be the police out there, dude, at that time. And uh, did that for a while, and I wanted to join SWAT. So uh, SW to, be, to, to be eligible to join the SWAT team, you need three years on the, as a police officer on Chicago. So they don't care where you're from. You can have 10 years from another department. That doesn't count. You have to have three years of Chicago. So I worked. So when the first test came around, I was only year two, so I couldn't test. I was like, God damn, so I have to wait three more years. So I, would, I waited that three years, but that three years I prepared myself. I knew the, I knew the, uh, the standards. I knew what they, they, they required for me to pass to join the SWAT team. I prepared for that three years. So when that time came for me to uh, take the test to become a SWAT officer, swim, shoot, obstacle course, uh, close, uh, you know, rifle school, SWAT school, all that, I, I blew it out the water because I prepared. I knew what was ahead of me. I didn't relax. I didn't like just sit back and just be like, okay, when the test come, I'm just going to test it because I'm a ranger. I, I'm, I'm awesome already. Right. I'm awesome. I didn't, I'm there. I don't ever think that way. You know, I, no I titles. Try, yeah. No fucking titles. I'm fucking humble. I, I grind, I grind, I grind, I grind, I grind. I work, I work, I work, I work. And when I get there and whatever the standards are, I fucking blow it out the water. So I grew, I graduated with uh, – so we, at the time when they tested, it was like 250 officers applied. They picked up 12, and I was one of the 12 guys that got picked up. And, uh, yeah, I, I was top of my class of the 12 guys and got on the team and did five years, man, before I retired now, you know, worked five years as a full-time SWAT guy. And uh, those five years, it was like no – Oh, it's fucking crazy. Like it was like insane. <laughs> It is, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like it's more like gangs or, or more like everything, everything, everything you, everything you can imagine. We, 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 we did, we served a lot of warrants. You know, we had a lot of SWAT jobs. We had a lot of like, you know, then the whole riot thing kicked off everything. It was just, it was just crazy. I got to experience a lot in five years as a well, Chicago. A cop. lot of growth. A lot of growth. Absolutely. That's awesome. And how did you uh, now you're in Texas for what, like two weeks, three weeks, a month? Yeah, I would say I'm in Texas now for about three weeks now. Three weeks. So, like, in Texas for three weeks. And sometimes, you know, I'm pretty sure when you're driving or you, when you – or those little tiny moments kind of comes in. Why do, you, why do you see yourself like, say, fuck, man, I'm doing a good job? Because here's the thing. Uh, the people can say yes or no. You know, you always – you want to compliment yourself. You always want to say, fuck, I'm doing a badass job. I'm doing a hard motherfucker. Some days you don't want to think like that. Some days mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck, I'm being soft. I have to – make this shit done, you know, and business and you have that mentality of driving because, like, here's the thing. You've been on a, a regular boot camp. Then you become a ranger. Then you did three pretty much uh, 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 police academy. Man, yeah. you know, plus SWAT team. And you just, like, your life is pretty much has been grinding, grinding, try to prove it, not to the older people, but yourself, like, I'm going to get this. I have to do this. And I have to be the top of my class. I cannot be average. I cannot be here sitting down lazy. I have yeah. to keep going, keep going. Like a high, like you said, high standard. And mm -hmm. when you drive and when you, like, sometimes 
think what do you think like fuck i'm proud of myself this is not even half what i'm gonna accomplish what do you think you know um i'll be honest with you man i i still don't think i did i've done shit <laughs> That's, and that's just the way I am, you know. Uh, I get it. Sometimes you need a pat in the back, but that's when you let off the gas. You know, when you're sitting there and you, 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 know, you pat yourself on the back like, oh, to, to me, life is ever changing, ever moving forward. You know, if you don't challenge yourself, you don't push to, to the next envelope, you don't climb the next mountain. Yeah, then, then you get stagnant. You get, you get soft. And I refuse to get mm -hmm. soft. I refuse to get stagnant. I refuse all that. I just I I look for the next challenge and I, that and then I I go after that you know and then that's that that's how you have to handle life. Life is it's not fun. Like we talked about, life can be as great or as sucky as you want it to be, and it's literally up to you. It's up to you how much success or how little success you want. And I want motherfucking all the success. So how do I get that? How do I achieve such a goal? You to 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 achieve such a goal, you have to have a mindset like you are you are never done. There is always something to do. Don't think for a second you've done something great. Yeah, cool, I did all that, but that is not who I am today. I don't rest on my laurels. I don't rest. I'm not that varsity high school football player who's now in the, in his forties and still wear the the varsity uh, football jackets. Like, oh, remember back in the days? Remember back in the days I used to be the, you know, the captain of the football team? Now I'm look fat as fuck, but you know, you keep talking about back in the days, right? And then, you know, I, I hung out with buddies like that who were, who I served with. A lot of them are, 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 you know, unfortunately out of shape. And I see the same thing when you sit to them, talk to them. They always talk about, oh, remember back then. Remember, yeah, cool. I get it. Remember back then we did some cool shit. What the fuck are you doing now? What are you, how were you, how, what are you doing now to better yourself? Like, and that's the way you got to think. Like, don't rest on what you, your accomplishments. The, the moment you do, you are not moving more forward because you're comfortable now. You got comfortable. I've accomplished all this. Great job. Then after that, you're just like, you feel like, oh, I've accomplished everything. But you shouldn't feel that way. You should always try, try to challenge yourself to be better. Like you, you you're a black belt. What, yeah. could, couldn't you just stop? No, I'm a black belt. Exactly. Why? Why? Why aren't you stopping? Because it's true. I don't, like I said, I want to grow. I want to keep better. Keep moving. Yeah. You know. And also, exactly. it's like a persistent job. You know. Because yeah. I I had a, a wake up call like recently. You know. Uh, I was focused on the business the past two years. We have three locations, and we we are being like uh, stagnant. Like you said, I got I got soft. You know. And uh, I never, I didn't realize like my surrounding. I, like, the, here's the thing: we always think somebody gonna come to you or come a voice from the sky in your head. Of, oh, yeah. oh, here's the thing: you know, Diego, listen to this. And always we expect something like that. And like, oh, I, I have control, I have control. But honestly, I didn't have any control. So you know, I gained weight. I did a lot of stuff. I, the professional athlete, don't do it. And you know, a lot of mistake, dumb decisions. And I was like, dude. You have to stop right here. And I just decided, I myself decided, like, okay, I'm going to change everything now. Every From this day now, I'm changing. I'm quicking yeah. this, this, this. I'm doing all, all different, you know. Yeah. And ever, ever since that happened, like, I already lost 40 pounds, you know, like 40 okay, pounds. Dude. And I, I'm being grinding. And I'm trying to, I, I started uh, the podcast. I started you know, a new business. And always, like, looking forward to, to the growth, you know. To look yep. into myself as like, dude, let's go. You should have more to done because, like mm -hmm. I said, when you you have uh, uh, something bigger who challenges you, you cannot stop and look away. Like, okay, man, somebody gonna come here, fly and pick me yep. up and put it at the top of the mountain. No, yep. you have to fucking yep. climb that shit. You know? Yeah. There's no success fairy, man. Yeah. A lot of people think that you sit there play video games, somebody's gonna knock on your door. Hey, here's a great opportunity for you. You seem like a great person. Here you go. No, that's not how life works. You want opportunity, you got to make it, right? And, and, and what you did is you could have went two routes. I mean, you had a fork in the road. You, you got to the road and you realized, I let myself go. I can either continue down this path or go the path that you went right now, right? Yeah. And I always tell people, the only, the only time that you will change is when you get, when you're sick and tired of the way you're living. 
That is the only time. Because I, you, we can sit here and motivate and, and put out videos and put out content and, and, and try to, like, motivate the people, right? But if they don't see it themselves and change for themselves, they're not going to change. That's why you see all these successful people pu putting out all this content, all these all this free content. How how to use social media, um, use your cell phone. You can start a business through your so, through 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 your cell phone. You could do this. This is how. This is how. And you always wonder why do they give out free information like that? That that's like gold. Why are they giving out? Because they know ninety five percent of people won't do it. No, and that's, and that's it, dude. That's a that you you, <laughs> hit, you you hit hard now. That's that's definitely yeah. right. Because so, and, and by the way, I appreciate because like it's not about like motivation because motivation yeah. co comes in comes out, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, and but the discipline it's there. Yeah, you know, like here we record this podcast. I was very busy and I set a goal was like I have to run three times a week, and mm -hmm. uh, between uh, four miles to ten miles. Uh, the day and i was like i'm sitting here i was like man i have all the excuses to stop and record this podcast go home chill with my daughter my wife and go back to the gym teach more i said like, no i'm gonna set a time i said i'm gonna do this and this is my prioritization and i'm gonna do that you know mm -hmm. and uh, of course help videos and content people put it out like yours i love it because you go deep and no no filters like no fucking you know like just this, this is how i am and this is how i think and if you don't like I'll follow me, fuck you. You know, unfortunately, it's like that. That's the way people are not used to that. People just like, oh my gosh, he cuss. Oh no, he he yeah. say that. You know, and just judging people like that. But I, and I, by the way, I appreciate your videos. I love it. Oh, uh, thank you. And uh, next talk now here a little bit of your business. You know, uh, we go home. Actually, uh, I heard before, but I didn't know like much about it. And then I, after we followed you, we started talking. I went deep in, and it's a good stuff and really good. And I did my research, you know, because I like to to look it up online and things like that and supplements. And I've been seeing it. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Tell a little bit uh, why you you decided to make your supplement. You know, you supplement and tell like, the difference because people think supplements is like a kind of drop shape. You should go there, put your labels on, you know, oh, yeah. that's just good. Just same, but it tastes the same like the other one. But no, your yeah. stuff is next level. Can you tell us a little bit more about We Go Home? Yeah, absolutely, man. We Go Home is a full circle of my career, you know. And I, th there's a lot of companies out there that are civilian based. Don't get me wrong, that's nothing wrong with that that try to pitch to law enforcement, military, but they don't understand because they don't, they don't live the life. They don't live what I went through or mm -hmm. what I've seen firsthand. So we go home to me. It's, it's, it's a passion for me because I'm, 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 I want to have something to give back. I want something. I want to leave a legacy. I want to be able to change people's lives. I want to be able to change people's mindsets. So we go home is really started when I back in the military. You know, and, and mm -hmm. well, how, how's that? It's because I train with my brothers. We train all the time together. We bleed together. We sweat together. We suffer together. We party together. I met their, their wives. I met their kids. I met their parents. So you build this bond, right? And then when you take that bond that is so strong that you build through adversity, it's the same thing with when you go to jiu-jitsu, when you have your core group of guys who suffer, who train all the time. You guys build a bond yes. because that's the bond you build. No stronger bond than through, through adversity, through pushing yourself, right? And it's the same thing with the military and police and fire. We, we build that bond. So when now you go to war, you're facing an enemy. I don't care. I don't care about my life. I care about my guy's life to my left and right. Those are my, I want them to be safe. I want to, I'm willing to give my life to protect their lives, right? So they can go home. So that's where the birth of We Go Home came from, that it's not about me. It's about those to my left and right to prepare them to, to, to do. Because the last thing I want to do or the last thing that I want to happen is to go to another funeral. Yes. And that funeral happened on my watch because I was ill-prepared, because I wasn't sh mentally sharp. I didn't train in, in weapons. I didn't, I didn't uh, take my physical fitness correctly. I didn't train in my skill set of tactical, tactical skill sets or whatever it is you do, fire, police. 
and that you let that person that you work with all the time die because of your incompetence. I can never sleep. I can never li- can. Yeah, they die, but I will, I will die for, for the rest of my life from the inside because I know that I didn't prepare. So I saw that and I was like, we need to get this out there, right? We go home and it's like, hey, let's get ready. Let's be ready because adversity is it's going to happen. It's not if, it's when. And you see it all the time on the Instagram, like all the police shootings, um, you know, militaries going to war, going to like do missions and, and you know, they get killed. It happens. We, we can't think like that can never happen. It, it's going to happen. How are you going to meet that? Are you going to be prepared? Or are you going to be a weak bitch and cower at the time of adversity? So that's the mindset of this community that we have erected. Now, speaking of the supplement, uh, dude, I've been taking supplements since I was like, I think the, the first time I took a supplement, I, I've been like when I was, uh, I was 17 years old. I walked into GNC. I didn't know shit, right? And the, the employee, I was like, hey, at that time, I was probably like a buck, 20, 125 pounds, soaking wet. I was like, I need to get big. Can you help me? So he, he gave like, here, this is what you need to get big. He gave me some creatine. He gave me a big 25-pound bag of weight cleaner. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you just take this, man. You take this. Man, you're going to get muscle, you know, whatever. I didn't, I'm like, cool. So I bought it. I didn't know the directions. And I started taking it. And I, I, fucked, my, I fucked my stomach up. I was like, God, this is not working. So that's kind of tells you where I started from uh, supplements and I started learning about it. And that was like an interest of mine. Like I saw how these, some of these companies are like cheating the people, you know, cause a lot of people don't, uh, they don't understand supplements. They see a, a flashy video. They see cool label. They're like, Oh, this must be awesome because such and such is endorsing it, but there's more behind it. It's the ingredients. Is it dosed correctly? Is it transparent? Where is it coming from? Where's the source? Uh, is it a white label product like you talk about? Because it does exist. There's there's manufacturing. Yeah, it's crazy. I, yeah. I didn't know that. That's mm-hmm. it. But then I saw. I was like, what the yeah. heck? There's a lot of there's a lot of people who, who do that because they don't know uh, the ingredients. Like, hey, can you make me a pre workout? They like they make a pre workout. Okay, I'll slap my label on it, and they make it theirs, right? But me personally, I I am a tactical athlete. I want the best stuff. Imagine you your body as a ferrari when you pull up to a gas station do you put 80 it was was 81 or 83 or 93 the premium you're going to put the premium shit so that's why i wanted to develop supplements personally for myself because i want to perform at the best so that's when i started really doing research again the phone again uh being able to be take the initiative and going out there and learning, right? Cause you can learn anything. Yeah, you want to be, you, you want to be a, a great content creator. There's a shit ton of fucking videos on YouTube for you to learn to be a content creator. You want to learn how to, uh, to uh, build a, a table. There's a shit ton of videos on YouTube, but it's up to you how much effort you want to put in. Right. And I wanted to put it cause you're, I'm a all, all in or all out type of guy. I don't, I don't have ass anything. So supplements to me was something I am super passionate about. And I, I was like, I'm sick and tired of a lot of these companies giving the people some bullshit, blowing smoke up their ass and, and really underdosing or not even delivering what they said. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking make supplements. So that's when I decided I started doing research on different manufacturers. I found one of the best manufacturers out there that manufactures for very big companies out, out here right now. And I was like, hey, this is what I want. This is my ingredients. Make it for me. And they made it. I got they the got sample. surprised when you asked the exactly uh, ingredient. Ingredient. The yeah. people are like, yeah, they oh, were kind of like, oh, you know your shit. I'm like, yeah, I know my shit. You know, yeah, I, this is something I, I. This is another passion of mine. This is something I give a shit about. So I, uh, I always tell them, I don't give a shit. I don't care about how much it costs. The ingredients, wherever. I just want the best shit in my shit because. I care about you guys. I care about the people that I'm selling this to, right? I'm not here to make money. I'm here to make assets. I'm here to make people better. I want, I want them, if my supplements, uh, my, uh, my, 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 my way of thinking can affect others in a positive manner for them to, to do good out in the world, to save lives, to inspire other people, then I've done my job, man. 
That's crazy. I love the name, but you know, and I, now yeah. I understand why the name yeah. and I love it. You know, yeah. and how was the support? Like when you first made it, people was like, "Oh, this shit, this dude is fucking crazy, man." Oh, the people were like very supportive of it. You know what? It's funny. So on my SWAT team, there's 65 guys, full time team, 65 guys, four squads, and out of 65 guys on my team, my brothers. You know how many supported my, my, my company? Five. Five out of 60 supported me. The rest, you know, talk shit. They had to click. They, you know, you, you know how it is. It's just life. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you know. And, and you cannot be mad at me now, no, but it's no. like, it's yeah, definitely. You would, think, you would think like, you know, you work with these guys all the time. They would support you, but it's, it's the other way. Oh, sorry. I don't know who this is. Let me decline that. Okay. Uh, so, Yeah. But the people, the people who don't know me support the shit out of me. And I, 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 I greatly appreciate it because I, I think they realize the person I am. I'm not a fake motherfucker. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not out here blowing smoke off people's ass. So you know, like, now, sorry, sorry. Yeah. You're right, no, you're right, gotcha. So, so oh. now what the, what the supplements you guys sell? I know everything, but where you guys specialize on it? Because, uh, man, I look in, uh, and all this stuff, like, man, this is a good stuff, you know? And I'm not a very supplement taker. I don't like much, like, uh, yep. um, uh, like honestly, no supplement, but yep. uh, my wife, she's, you know, she's, uh, always been lifting and take supplement and she said Diego the way you're training the way you're living now you have to take some stuff you have you mm -hmm. know and I got I love the your uh, vitamin you know and uh, the the green the mm -hmm. the green vitamin and everything it's like man I yep. like this and I showed to her and she's like yeah this is not something normal it's just something really good and yep. uh, and I told her I said I'm gonna talk to the guy you know and I said okay so ask him about that like well, what supplement so the listen can see and also a curiosity of mine you know and what do you guys yep. specialize on we specialize we don't have really one specialty our my spe our, I think our specialty as a supplement company is really giving the end users you guys the the options of just premium shit you know i will never i there's a lot of companies that will give you okay here's this but here's a lower one no it's all premium for me like it, the, you pay for what you get right and that's how I, i operate you know i only want the best stuff so we we try to i everything that i i believe us needs as a like an athlete like yourself like and your wife is right you know it's like if you're fat out of shape you, you think you could take some creatine and you're gonna be like arnold you're fucking crazy Yes. Right. But but if you are trained, your diet's on point, you 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 got your 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 uh you know, everything is good. That supplement is what is that's what it is. It's just to supplement you to get you a little bit better. So that's the whole thing with us is like we we offer, like you said, the tropical storm, the greens and reds. A lot of companies they sell it separately because they want to make money off of us, right? Why give them something together when they couldn't separate it and make them buy $45, $45, so $90? Or some people even sell for $100. But I was like, hey, I want to give people the, the bang for their buck. I want to give them – so when you look at our products, it's like two, three, or four, even sometimes four products in one. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you guys like, hey, I care. Uh, I want to give you the most because I know how hard people you know, work for their money. And I'm not here to just try to make a dollar off people. I want to give them the best stuff in one container so they don't have to have, like, a whole drawer full of, like, three, four containers. They can just have one container that covers it all, like the Tropical Storm. It has probiotics. It has mineral complex. It has uh, mushrooms for the nootropics. It has greens and reds. It has, uh, you know, packed with vitamins. I mean, that in itself I'll purchase is, like, one. that in itself is, like, five fucking products. Like, you, people usually buy separately. We give it to you all in one. You know, then there's the Endure, which is like a hydration, a BCAEA, a electrolytes, all in one. So now when you're out there rolling, you know, you put that in a two liter bottle of water, it's going to replenish your electrolytes. It's going to replenish all your lost minerals. You're going to have the branch chain amino acids to help repair your muscles, uh, to help burn fat, to, to keep you going. I mean, why, how we supplement and how we do our things really comes down to science and the body and what it requires and uh, how can we combine multiple products to make it something that 
people can enjoy and, and really see the benefits from, you know, and the most recent ones are sleep aid. So we do sleep aid. We're getting ready to drop our protein. We're getting ready to drop. I mean, there's a shit. Uh, yeah, a, lot, a lot of exciting news. And while you guys, people can find you guys. Yeah. We go home subs. Well, I'm, I'm definitely yeah. going to do that. So you guys already have this sleep because here's another thing. I, I saw the other day you talk about melatonin. And uh, I, I take, you know, melatonin, uh, not very often, but like yeah. one day, yes, one day, yes, one day, no. How many milligrams yes. do you take? Uh, five. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah. That's too high. That, you know, after, after you, you say that video, uh, because here's the, the problem uh, with a lot of people and myself. It's not educated, or not because yep. it's not out there, but I don't want you, not because I don't want it. I, I honestly, because I don't want you to like, okay, let me study this and let's see what my body is, right? Yep. So I see a lot of companies uh, out there just putting stuff up, and but don't educate. Like, hey, guys, yep. be careful if you do this. This can be the cause of serious problem in you. Yep. And um, especially supplements, you know, so people don't see. It's inside. You don't know what's going on inside. It's the reaction mm -hmm. everything. So that's when I saw uh, you posting about it. And I was like, huh, this is an interesting point of view, you know. Yep. And uh, can you tell a little bit about the sleep aid you have? Yeah. So the sleep aid is called Zero Dark 30. Uh, so we combine all the proper ingredients to get you into a deep state of sleep because here's the thing guys uh people think you know after you're working out and after you know you work out whatever you do jiu jujitsu or whatever you know your, your your muscles get broken down you need to repair it people think protein helps it does it, it helps produce protein synthesis which helps repair the muscle but the true repairing of the muscles is do is done during sleep people don't realize not just any type of sleep deep REM sleep and REM sleep is where your body is in this state where it's like really like your body's really working to repair everything that you've done the following day. So what we co come to realize is there's certain ingredients and certain um, products that is when combined, it synergetically works together to achieve that. So when I got the sample and I let my team take it and they all wear the whoop app. You ever seen the whoop app, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they all wear the whoop app and they're like, it monitors your sleep. It shows you how, like your sleep efficiency, it shows your, your strain, it shows you your REM sleep. And my guys sent me from just the one week they took it. It's like, man, my, my sleep is like above 90%. My REM sleep has improved from like 20 to 25 to 30 to 37. And it's like, man, I wake up refreshed. I am not groggy. It's not habit forming. And that's the one thing I wanted to create, you know, for the, especially for the community, not just for us who train, who needs a good night's sleep, but police officers, military, firefighters, because the schedule is so hectic. Schedules are always changing. You know, you go from nights to mid, um, to days to midnight. You're working overtime. You're doing all this. And I, I, this is from my experience. You know, I had such shitty sleep before, but now, man, I, I mean, we created such a fucking powerhouse of like a sleep aid that is, like I said, non-habit forming, and it's like dose. Every day you take? I take it every night, 30, uh, 30, 30 to 45 minutes before sleep. And then, then in the greens, you take every day as well? Yes, I take it right in the morning because I do oh. intermittent fasting. So that's the, that's the only thing I do, and it's like less, I think it's 25 cals, so it doesn't really break my fast, you know, and it's zero sugar, so... I take it right in the morning and it gets me going. I don't even like, I rarely like to right now I'm drinking coffee, but I rarely, rarely, rarely drink coffee anymore. Cause I have that natural energy from the, from the uh, tropical storm. So I take That's that in the morning, awesome. 1 PM, I break my fast. I got an eight hour window to eat. And I only usually eat two meals. If I'm lucky, maybe two and a half, then start my fast. That's awesome. Okay. Before we finish, I, I, I would just want to make a topic here. We go home foundation. I see you working to the lawyers and stuff like that. Uh, I would just want to, you tell a little bit more about it. Like, I don't, I don't know if we can talk a whole lot, yeah. but I yeah. know it's a lot exciting because when I see through it, when you talk about it on Instagram, man, I see the passion, you know, there are people you like talking about. I just would like to, to explain, explain a little bit about the listener because we have another one here uh actually uh, right here in the gym like we adopt a cop you know something like that so i would like to know like a little bit more deep and like what people can expect for we go home foundation yeah so we go home foundation is another passion project of mine because uh you know it's just 
a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of people like say, "Oh yeah, we're with you." You know, we care. But in the end of the day, they just want to make money. You mm-hmm. know, it's been proven time and time again. And like I said, I I don't talk. I put I put action into play. When I say I'm going to do something, or when I say, "Hey, I we give a we give a fuck about the community. We care." We're we're going to put into action. So the foundation is something I always wanted to do with the company, hand in hand. You know, to be able to give back to. Because uh, I've seen it, man. I went to too many fucking funerals, man. In the military, in, in the police field. I see these widows. I see these husbands and wives lose their, lose their, you know, their, their significant other. And now they're stuck with, stuck with paying for, for the mortgages. They're stuck with the kids putting them through college. They're stuck with all that. So now we, we, we have an opportunity to create a foundation to give back. To be like, hey. If you're in this, if you're in this problem, we're here to help you. Or if there's an injured officer, law enforcement, fire, military, first responder, EMS, EMT, they get injured in the line of duty, can't pay for their medical bills, we're here to help you. Um, people who can't uh, want to go to training, but the department or whatever don't have the money, we're here to help you. So we want to give back, and this is what this is what this foundation is about: giving that's, back. That's awesome. Yeah, hey, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for this podcast. I think it was awesome. You know, uh, it's not too long, not too short. It was perfect. Every every single word you said, you know, and truly appreciate. I'll definitely check it out to supplements. I actually, after this, I'm going to be purchase this lip a in the tropical, in the tropical, uh, what's the name? Tropical, tropical store, tropical store. store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, and definitely thank you. You know, I would love to have those products and i'm gonna be tasted see what's up and i will yeah. do give you my 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 true review yes, and uh, you know and then, well, by the way thank you you know i yeah. know your time is so valuable you know your business owner you always train always busy busy but the time to, you put it in here to invest of uh on this you know to put a like the, your your time to uh, like speaking about you your past and things like that helps a lot like sometimes we don't realize how our words can help someone in the yeah. struggle in a way and like yeah. very few people were gonna recognize say oh man tank thank you so much man you help me you know awesome i, I listen to that they have very few people just gonna keep to the inside and like okay man thank you so much for this podcast yeah. and you pass through it, you know so by the way thank you yeah no thank you for having me on uh you know if we, we if we can help if i can help one person in, in this life to change their life and it's worth it, man. So, thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Thank you. And do you want to say your Instagram, your company Instagram, anything like that? People go follow you guys. Yeah. So, yeah, my company's uh, Instagram page is We Go Home, literally. So, look, I, I when I found when I first got that, I was like, oh my god, nobody took that yet. <laughs> I guess it was meant to be. So it was great. So we got that We Go Home, and mine is just my name, Trung B Win. So. Yes, sir. Thank you. Peace out, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, brother. You too. Be safe. You too. Good afternoon.